Good evening and a very warm welcome to First Issues. It has been an eventful few weeks in the sphere of innovation, science and technology. And this evening we begin by showing you the happenings and discussions that took place at the World Telecommunications and Information Society Day commemorations that took place in Tamara two Fridays ago as well as those from the Innovation Prize for Africa events from last week. World Telecommunications and Information Society Day, WTISD, began 151 years ago, an initiative by the United Nations. It represents a period of time in which the world stops and considers the state and potential direction of what is the biggest contributor to the modern world as we know it information communication technologies not only have icts permeated every industry in this information or digital age revolutionizing banking services logistical support for the transportation and mining industries retail and so on but a report by Global E-Sustainability Initiative and Accenture Strategy says that what we are witnessing is nothing short of a revolution in the growth of new, disruptive business models. It says a decade ago, a few would have guessed that technology firm Airbnb would be able to become the largest hotelier in the world within seven years without building a single hotel or guest house. Or that technology startup Uber could use a single smartphone application to build a $40 billion taxi business in six years without owning a single car. The Smarter 2030 report says these trends are now extending out to the traditional public sector. That's healthcare, education and transport, bringing huge opportunities in the way we interact with service providers and with each other. Local WTISD celebrations took place in Tamaha on the 17th of this month, facilitated by the Ministry of Transport and Communications, Botswana Communications Regulatory Authority, Botswana Fiber Networks and other stakeholders. The event mirrored those from across the world. Amongst the host of other activities, we heard from dignitaries such as the Minister of Transport and Communications, were shown stellar examples of how public-private partnerships can help bridge the digital divide through the donation of computers by WTISD stakeholders to a Tamaha school as well as the public library and heard from innovative tech startups. For some of us, technology has become such an integral part of our day-to-day -day lives that we don't even see the opportunities and advantages it affords us. Whether it's simply keeping abreast of current affairs, upskilling yourselves, making vital business connections, or even cooking an exotic recipe, we use the internet on a daily basis to actualize our ambitions. There are some, however, who are not as fortunate while we are busy charging on ahead, looking to become content producers and compete with the best in the world, what of those who remain not only computer illiterate, but have no access at all? In keeping with the theme of the Telecommunications Day theme of ICT Entrepreneurship for Social Impact, is a conversation we had with a young man who truly encapsulates that idea, showing that the investments that have been made into bridging the so-called digital divide may indeed be bearing some fruit. Thomas Bika, the owner of the Kitong ICT Center in Hakuto, one of 94 centers provided to beneficiaries through a partnership between government and MassCom in the last five years, has seen firsthand that bridging the divide goes beyond just providing access. And he goes beyond providing the community with ICT services to help empower the youth in his community. What kind of changes have you seen in Hakuto since you had this center? Maybe some moments you're proud of, or what can you say the center has done? Um, uh, firstly, now people are aware of internet. Mostly people are not aware of internet, uh, but they are aware of it. Uh, it has reduced costs in terms of people traveling as far as Mitzmotlabe and Khaburoni to just do a simple thing as a photocopy. Uh, it has actually 
it's actually, it's actually providing a lot of services for the community, of which they are very uh, appreciative of. Yeah. I trust it's quite an empowering tool. What then do you want to do now going forward? Where do you want to take this? Well, going forward, I, because I, I have this ability to drop good proposals, winning proposals, so I've started to assist uh, gender applicants, youth applicants who are interested in, in taking government initiatives. Uh, I help them, assist them in completing their forms, in gathering all the necessary documents in terms of quotations and letters of intent, market letters, uh, to get their proposals ready for submission. And that is what I want to do. I want to assist as, uh, as many youth as I can to also be entrepreneurs as I am. But beyond the relatively smaller wins, what is happening at the broader planning stage? How far is Botswana from creating an environment that is conducive for ICT innovation? We present our one-on-one -on -one conversation with the Minister of Transport and Communication, Tenola Mabel, after the break. Welcome back to First Issues. Technology continues to deliver mind-boggling innovations that some of us, frankly, struggle to keep up with. It literally appears that in this day and age, one is truly limited only by the size of their imagination when it comes to what can be achieved. Because of their democratizing power, we're now seeing technology hubs emerge not only in the first world, but across the world with countries such as Nigeria and Kenya showing the continent the power of ICTs to leapfrog over even the challenges presented by poor infrastructure. Botswana itself has invested millions into internet cables and bodies to regulate the use of ICT in the country. But how far are we in our efforts to provide affordable, fast and good quality internet connections? in providing services befitting a diamond city to visiting business people and fit to promote an environment of technological innovation. We looked to the Minister of Transport and Communications, Tsenolo Mabel, to get an understanding. One interesting thing that um, you know, I said in my presentation was how we're going to utilize ICT in agricultural projects. You've seen um, two youths who made uh, the presentation at, at the event. There's a program called Mudisa. You know, created and invented by youth. And I'm sure it's going to be a hit. Because for, for the elderly, consider someone who's got a kettle post, an ordinary motswa. Such a program will come handy to them. And what we want to see is lives being transformed. Costs as well as quality of our internet yes. remains a major um, complaint. Yes, yes. Where, how far along uh, in addressing those two major obstacles are we as a country? We have a regulator in the form of BOKRA. And I'm very happy to report that of recent, they've acquired a tool which will actually help them monitor performance of our, our public uh, telecommunication operators. And, and I'm sure, um, you know, I would agree with you, right? There's been complaints on drop calls. There's been complaints on, um, you know, uh, not sufficient capacity being, you know, procured by different entities. I'll give you an example, right? <clears throat> you'd, you'd find that in some cases, a lodge, which has maybe uh, 100 rooms, would be buying certain capacity and that capacity won't be able to actually service that whole population so what I would like to encourage what especially on the business people is to say buy enough capacity to cover you know um, whoever you be accommodating in your lodge because I know this complaint has even you know come from um, you know different uh, lodges and hotels so I know we have a a complaint on the um, <clears throat> contention ratios. We're working with um, Bo B Mobile, um, Bo Mascom, and um, and Bo Orange to see how the contention ratios can be improved, just to ensure that uh, we have 
enough capacity. And the other thing that I have, I, th I think I will have to say to Botswana is, whenever you buy bundles, buy enough bundles that would really cater for your needs. I know sometimes it's about operators not making, you know, enough provision for that number of people. And for instance, if I could give you an example, um, if you try to access the internet <clears throat> in the afternoon or in the morning, it will be clogged up. But at night, it will be easier to access the internet. Why? Because not a lot of people will be using internet by that time. That's what I mean by procuring enough capacity. Um, we've seen great examples, as like you said, the, the handing over ceremony of the porter cabin with mm -hmm. the computers, computers and yes, air yes, conditioning yes, to yes, the yes, public uh, library. Yes. That was a great, I feel, and even the donation to the school, that was a great example of private and government mm -hmm. partnership yes, uh, yes. to empower uh, the youth through technology. Can What other projects can we see going forward, do you think? Coming back to the project of Sisiro, the one for the libraries yeah. that I've just handed, that Potter Camp, uh, Potter Cabin rather, Potter Cabin with computers, uh, internet wired up. I think it's a very good initiative in the sense that um, that is a facility for all the age groups. You can have the elderly visiting the library, and that facility is actually there so that we teach the the people how to use internet. And um, other examples maybe that I could uh, see coming up is to actually, for, for instance, uh, talking to ESP project that you know uh, the government is, is, is undertaking. We're actually going to be connecting more and more schools. Um, if I give you an example, in Botswana, we're looking at 503 schools that will be connected, both primary and uh, you know, senior secondary schools. Why? because we concerned even by the results that we are attaining at the schools. We want to improve and build up on the performance of both the teacher and the learner. It has to be all across. We have to develop the teacher and develop the student and also not leave out the parents, you know, because these are the people that also would need you know, benefits of ICT to actually improve on, on their lives. Finally, I was very impressed when, as a country, we said we'd have hotspots around the country mm -hmm. um, for Botswana in, in major areas to be able to go on Wi-Fi and use the internet. I thought that would as a great initiative um, to get Botswana online and familiar with it and even using it for their benefit. But now... Um, I found out that the hotspots aren't free. They have to be paid for, unlike in other <coughs> countries that have really done similar projects. Yes, yes. I, th I, th I think you, you, you are very correct. But one thing to note is that um, if you look at the prices of the bundles that you, you buy and utilize at these hotspots, the rates are very, very low. They're more or less like wholesale you know, price. So I agree with you. Um, we must be seen to be moving towards, you know, free hotspots where people can gather around. But of course, here uh, with the example of the Sisiro project that I've just handed over, there is Wi-Fi that people can just come outside there and access, you know, internet and actually enjoy it um, and you know get their lives transformed. So there will be spots where there will be free yes. internet availed and for now we shouldn't expect to see free Wi-Fi at our bus ranks and the like. No, definitely. Let me give you another, um, you know, example. The BR Express. Yes. We have Wi-Fi on board that is free, uh, at least for some, you know, classes. But I, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to Botswana Railway such that we could, uh, you know, get it across, uh, you know, the classes so that anybody who, who bought VR Express uh, can, can easily you know, access um, Wi-Fi free. Welcome back to the show. As we now cast our eyes on innovations from beyond our borders, 
and across the continent. With the help of the inspiring group of innovators that descended upon Botswana last week as the country hosted the Innovation Prize for Africa Awards for the very first time. It was an honor the country truly reveled in, as made evident by President Lieutenant General Dr. Sarata Kama Ian Kama, not only gracing the awards night, but giving a keynote address. And the attendance of ministers and captains of industry alike from across the region. The founder of the African Innovation Foundation behind the awards is entrepreneur and venture capitalist Jean-Claude Bastos de Moraes, who says his main aim was to show that despite long-held misconceptions, Africa does indeed have innovators. Sharing with us before the start of the event some of the most memorable projects to come from his initiative in all its years. Oh, there are several of those, but uh, um, one of those is uh, the Fufu Mix. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's a machine which has been inv inv invented by uh, an, uh, an African innovator where how you can mix fufu uh, in, a, in a very short period of time with an excellent quality so that all of a sudden you, you're able to, um, to open a restaurant and to serve more people in a shorter period of time with the quality of the African fufu. Um, that uh, person has, uh, through the Innovation Prize of uh, Africa, then also found financiers. So he found uh, uh, 200 million franc CFA um, to grow his business. So he was very happy about that. Then there was also um, a fly farm, which has, uh, which has uh, stroked me, um, which is nothing else than um, out of uh, waste. Uh, um, uh, of, of other animals. You have flies which go on there and then they, they create the larves. And you take these larves and you, you, with a procedure they have invented, you, you dry them and then this becomes the food for chicken and other, and other animals. So it's very rich on proteins and it has only eight days to produce it and it's natural. So, revolution. And then there is a, um, uh, something which has also, um, from the healthcare sector, which has fascinated me, is, uh, is that so far we have a big problem because in, uh, um, hum humanity has, uh, has been changed through antibiotics. Because um, if, you, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you hurt and you have a, uh, an infection, this has in the past killed people. And through antibiotics, um, this has cured people. Now, over time, the antibiotics which have been uh, um, created by, uh, by, by several pharmaceutical companies, they have, uh, uh, the bacteria have found resistant to that antibiotics. So this person, which is an African uh, inventor uh, uh, from Morocco, uh, he has found a, uh, a medicine which is nat based on, on, on natural products, natural ingredients, a, a system how the bacteria cannot be resist, become resistant to antibiotics. So this is incredible. So all these inventions, they have a, they have a, a real potential uh, uh, for the international market, not only African. So I'm very proud of that because this, this uh, showcases that I was right uh, when 10 years ago I had this idea, or eight years ago when I had this idea of this innovation platform for innovators. And, Everybody told me that I'm crazy. Uh, in Africa, there is no innovation, and we have proven them wrong. There is innovation, and there is innovation for Africa done by Africans, and even innovation done in Africa for the world. In his experience working with innovators from across the continent, which countries would our guests say are producing more quality talent? And what does he think gives them such an edge over others on the continent that are lagging behind? I have learned that uh, uh, you have different levels of innovation and uh, you have to decide on what level of innovation you, you, you look for um, and for what market uh, segment uh, this innovation is. There, is. there is fantastic innovation for local uh, uh, po populations which are less innovative in, in general, which are also very useful. Uh, and then there is innovation which is uh, high-tech, 
very advanced uh, 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 stuff. So now if I look uh, for the advanced uh, innovation, um, I think that on the continent so far, statistically speaking, this is not a subjective uh, um, statement, is that uh, the numbers of, uh, of high quality innovation are higher um, from South Africa and from, from the Northern African uh, countries in general. Um, you have in the IT space a high number of innovation uh, coming from, the, from Kenya. And uh, you have a big multitude of innovation coming in complete different and a big variety of fields coming from Nigeria um, in terms of numbers. You're going to say, well, that's logic, there are more people, so the population is bigger, so they have more innovators. Yes, uh, this comes down to that. But the rest have, um, all other countries have always um, astonishing things coming and popping out. So uh, uh, it's just a question of uh, uh, the infrastructure they had so far, I think. The winning project beat out some tough competition. Some of the best innovations on this continent nominated this year included a water heating and air conditioning solution that can create up to 90% savings on electricity consumption by South African engineer Andre Nell. Imaging technology that dramatically improves breast cancer detection by Kit Vaughan, also of South Africa and a software solution that assesses the structural integrity of architectural designs by Dr. Yusuf Rashid from Egypt. We trust that the Africa Innovation Foundation has been successful in waking us all up to the fact that world-class African solutions by Africans do exist. We thank you for tuning in to tonight's program and close by announcing the winner from our previous episode that profiled alternative and holistic approaches to health for increased productivity. Muluki Bakhanetseng from Mupipi wrote, Motula khanyo nyako mpielo, ki temo khetsi, ibile ki dumela gore, fa ke tswa ding aka tsa setso tsa bogologolo, fa di ne di bolokilwe, di ka ba di rifile maduo a mana magadi mo go lwantseng malwetsi a sa tshela nweng. Look out for some first issues goodies heading your way, Muluki, as well as whoever writes the most thought-provoking comment or question from tonight's episode. With that, 